<laughs> it is a rough day, uh, though, however, for retailers. Same source sales miss at Home Depot. Kohl's cutting their outlook, coupled with bad news from a few names that, well, let's, quite, let's, let's admit it, a lot of these shares are already down 95% from all time highs. I'm going to bring in Jackie DeAngelis to help us break this all down. Jackie. Good afternoon to you, Charles. Well, retail is certainly important when you're looking at the broader market because it gives us a sense of consumer sentiment, how people are spending, and, and how they feel about the economy. Uh, the earnings that came out today were not stellar. Let's start with JCPenney because I think this is an important one. Missing on the top and bottom line, a larger loss than expected. Those same store sales, they were down more than 5%. The CEO of JCPenney actually said that the tariffs imposed by President Trump haven't had an impact on the company just yet, but they are concerned about that second potential round of tariffs on the other remaining $300 billion of goods. Uh, and he said that it would have a more meaningful impact, so certainly something to watch for. On the Kohl's side, another department store missing its earnings, lowering its outlook for the full year. And the CEO CEO there saying the year started off slower than we'd like. Nordstrom's, Macy's, you can see that they're down on the session as well in sympathy. And the department stores have a challenge here. They're trying to move locations. They're trying to spiff up their displays to get consumers in the door. But that's really difficult to do when it's so easy to shop online with competitors like Amazon, or you can go straight to the manufacturer and buy off their website. Sometimes the pricing is more competitive, and certainly you don't have to go to the store. It's easier, more convenient for people. Um, Home Depot is another one that investors are focused on. Uh, the numbers were better. They beat the estimates, but uh, they were down because same-store sales grew at the slowest level that the company's seen in three years. Finally, I'm just going to end here with store closures, looking at Dress Barn, the parent company there saying that it's going to close 650 Dress Barn stores. And I actually looked up the um, entire uh, amount of stores that were closed for last year. According to CoreSight Research, 5,864. Charles, at this point in the year, we're only in May, already 7,000 announced closures. So you can see that brick and mortar stores uh, and retailers are still struggling here. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jackie. In fact, I'd like you to stay with us. And I want to bring back Phil and, and David. I told you, Phil, if you're not careful, we're not going to let you go. <laughs> so, gentlemen, let's talk about this because you know, investors look at this and they wonder this brick and mortar story, how much of it is actually a reflection of the overall strength of the, uh, the consumer out there? I think the consumer's in pretty good shape. And, and you look at the, we just got a retail sales number the other day on April. Disappointing on the surface, but the March number was revised higher. And because of the changing calendar on Eastern Passover every year, you've got to look at those two months in combined, what I refer to as the Maple effect on retail sales. Retail sales were up about 3.5% year over year, those two months combined. I think what that does is it tells us that the consumer has shrugged off the, the, the difficult winter, the, the government shutdown, the negative wealth effect in the fourth quarter, and, and we've eradicated the stench from the December and the February uh, numbers that were poor. So I think the consumer's in decent shape. It feels like also Wall Street uh, starts to take things in consideration. Right now, Home Depot's up four bucks from where it opened, right? The low of the session is around 186. It's already up a buck. That, to me, is what I'm looking for, how Wall Street reacts. Not to the other names, because let's face it, JCPenney is down like 98% from its all-time high. Uh, ASNA, uh, you know, the parent company, Dress Barn, that's down 99% from its high. They have been slaughtered, but the, a name like Home Depot seems to be getting the benefit of the doubt. There'll be survivors for sure, but the you know, big box demand, there's just not enough of it out there. The store, stores have to shrink. I walked into the mall in Stanford recently, and I noticed that William Sonoma was gone. I was kind of shocked to see that. The Amazon effect is real. I'm not as encouraged uh, right now because Amazon's only up fractionally uh, on the day. And their last quarter wasn't that great. It wasn't, wasn't horrible, but growth clearly had slowed. Uh, this, this, I, I'd have a word of caution here for Ruth. For, for, for the consumer or for uh, A little bit on the consumer. The fact that Amazon slowed in the last quarter, that bothers me a lot. You know, Jackie, I was looking at comments from uh, Home Depot vis-a-vis -vis the tariffs. They're saying that they've been manageable so far. Uh, maybe a billion dollars in new tariffs would be another billion. But they also said that's just 1% of sales and that they're doing things already like uh, trying to uh, move supply chains. Uh, you know, we know that the industry sent the White House a letter yesterday, uh, the foot, at least the footwear makers did. 
and they don't want any parts of this, but do you see where they might start to make long-term changes anyway with, with respect to supply chain? Absolutely. I mean, they'll be forced to. You know, the president's been holding back after he raised the tariffs and China retaliated. He had that extra punch. He's, he's sort of saving that in his back pocket before he moves forward. But um, if this, you know, the tensions continue uh, to worsen here and a deal really can't be struck, say, by the end of June and, and the president decides he is going to go after that remaining $300 billion, you know, companies like Nike, for example, that manufacture so much in China, they are going to be forced to find other alternatives. And that's certainly going to change the business model altogether.